Good evening, one and all. Myself, Dr. Rupa Shri, consultant in obstetrics and gynecology, Hyderabad. Now we are going to discuss the topic that is diameters of fetal skull. I think it is a little bit a difficult topic for uh, final year students and also people who are preparing, students who are preparing for the exam. Okay, let me make this topic simple and uh, help you to remember for more. Okay, uh, see, when we are discussing about the diameters of the skull, see, first we have to remember that which diameter they are asking in the exam. That is, see, diameters of the skull means it is divided into, again, anterior, posterior diameter and the transverse diameter. Okay. Totally, there are six anterior, posterior diameters. Okay. In which, again, three are divided into only anterior, and other three into posterior. Totally there are six anterior posterior diameter of which three are anterior and three are posterior. And how many transverse diameters are there? Four transverse diameters are present. Okay. See how can they ask questions in this means? How many anterior posterior diameters are there? Means there are six diameters in which only posterior how many are there? Three diameters are from posterior side. How many transverse diameters are there? They are this type they can be asking in the examinations. Next. Okay. Now let us come to the important part that is these are the anterior and posterior diameters. It is very simple and very easy to remember and there are a lot of MCQs present in this question. Okay. See. Anterior posterior. As I have said, see. This is the anterior side of the fetal skull. After completion of all this, I will show the skull and I will show the diameters clearly. Please take the notes at present. Anterior and posterior. Okay. As I said, three diameters are from posterior side. Okay. See, this is the occipital region. Occiput. And the, and the region behind the occiput, that is sub-occipital region. Sub-occipital. Okay. And this is the Momentum. This is the submentum. Okay. From the occipital region 1 and the suboccipital region. See, first diameter is sub occipital pragmatic. Okay. Take a scale and when we measure now, those findings are given in the tables. You can remember it as it is. When I explain you now, you will get a clear, clear concept regarding it. sub -occipito. See, this is the sub point. sub -occipito. And this is the bregma. And this is the frontal part. Okay. Now, sub bregmatic This black color line. That is sub bregmatic It is about 9.5 centimeters. Okay. It, it is a complete section. Now see, this is the bregma of my skull. Now I am measuring it from sub occipital point. It is about 9.5. See, complete flexion. Okay. It is about, when the fetal skull is in complete flexion, the presenting diameter would be sub occipital bregmatic. It is about 9.5 centimeters and it is a vertex presentation. Okay. See, vertex presentation. Next is a sub Occipital frontal. Now see, this is the black color line is a sub occipital pragmatic. Now see, this yellow color line, it is extending from sub occipital region to that of the frontal region. Therefore, it is sub occipital frontal. It is about 10 centimeters. Now see, now the frontal part should be visible. See, it is sub occipital point. So, see, this is the frontal. From year to year, if it is measured with a scale, it is about 10 centimeters. Okay? 10 centimeters. See, this is a complete flexion. Now, you while complete flexion, you can see only the bregma part. If you lift it up, now you can see the frontal part. Therefore, it is incomplete flexion. Okay? Incomplete flexion. It is also vertex presentation. Okay? 
Do you understand? This black color line is a suboccipito pragmatic, about 9.5 cm. And this is yellow color line, that is a suboccipito frontal, about 10 cm. And now the third point is occipito frontal. It is about 11.5 cm. See, occipital prominence from occiput to the frontal part. See, this is the occipito frontal. Now we measure from ear to ear. It is about 11.5 cm. That is complete deflection. Complete deflection. It is also vertex presentation. See, if you want to see the frontal part, the head should be like this. So, flexion means like this. Deflection means like this. You can see the occiput and the frontal part. Complete deflection, vertex presentation about 11.5. Okay. Now, these are the three diameters which are from posterior side. Okay. Total is six of which three posterior and three anterior. We have already discussed the posterior diameters of the fetal skull. Now, come to the anterior. These are all the posterior diameters. Now, the anterior diameters. Now, the posterior means occiput, suboccipit, complete. Now, the anterior means mentum, submentum. Okay. That is first one. Mentovertical. Mentovertical. See. This is the highest point of the fetal skull. This is the vertex. Okay. Here three lines are there. That is light green and this purple color and some deep, deep uh, sea green like that. Okay. Three are from the anterior side. See this mentum. And this is vertex. It is about 14 centimeters. Okay. It is about 14 centimeters. Okay. Now we have to see the mentum and the vertex. See. It is like this. Means partial extension. It is partial extension. In case of partial extension means the head can again turn into vertex presentation or it can completely undergo like this and it can deliver by face presentation. Okay. So, partial extension. So, it can turn into flexion, complete flexion or it can turn into complete extension. In partial extension, the presentation is bro. Okay. It is a bro. Now, next. One is mentovertical. Other two are from submentum. See this purple color line and the sea green. That is submentum. Submentovertical. Submentovertical. Again, it is about 11.5 centimeters. It is incomplete extension. Face presentation. Okay, see. Now, submentum. This is the submentum part. This is the vertex highest point. From year to year, when you measure with the scale, it is about 11.5 centimeters and it is that is incomplete extension. Okay, like this will be incomplete extension. It is a face presentation. Now, the third point is submentum. See, submentum. Bragmatic, the purple color line. Okay. It is about 9.5 centimeters. Okay. Submento Bragmatic. 9.5 centimeters. It is complete extension. And it is a face presentation. See, I am writing it clearly and detailedly. If you want to take the notes also, you can copy it. Okay. And it is submento pragmatic 9.5 cm. There are a lot of questions which are present in this topic. Okay, let's discuss them. See, I said already the posterior are 3, the anterior are 3. In case of posterior, see, which is the engaging diameter of the fetal skull. See, the short diameter is present for sub occipito pragmatic. So, sub occipito pragmatic is the engaging diameter in case of anterior posterior it is of complete flexion and it is a vertex presentation 
almost this every point which I have written on the slide is important. Okay. The engaging diameter, anteroposterior diameter, suboscular pragmatic, 9.5 centimeters. It is complete flexion with vertex presentation. Okay. Now, in this, the next point is mento vertical. Okay. Which is the largest, longest diameter in case of anteroposterior? It is a mento vertical. It is about 14 centimeters. What is the presentation with mento vertical? It is a bro presentation. Why? Because of partial extension. Okay. This is the second most important question which I am discussing. And the third one is the diameters which are in uh, which are same from the anterior and the posterior end are one is subosphito that is uh, subosphito pragmatic it is 9.5 and the submento pragmatic is 9.5 these two are same the diameters which are equal from the anterior side and the posterior side are subosphito pragmatic submento pragmatic 9.5 later and now other two diameters which are equal are Occipital frontal from the posterior side and the submento vertical from the anterior side. They are about 11.5. Okay. Now, till now, I have said only as lines. There are four lines which I have said. That is engaging diameter, suboscular pragmatic, 9.5, complete flexion. And mento vertical, 14 centimeters, bro presentation. And the equal diameters. Okay. Uh, when we divide these and split these, almost five to six questions may be present in the present slide. Okay, did you all understand? It is very easy when you compare it with anterior and the posterior side. Okay, now let's go to the other slide that is transverse diameters. This also you can remember it very easily. Transverse diameters. As I said, the transverse diameters are only four. Okay, first one. Parietal. Okay, see, parietal means, see, these two are the parietal bones, these prominences, parietal eminences, okay. When you measure the distance between one parietal eminence to the other parietal eminence, this is the parietal diameter. This is the engaging diameter in case of transverse presentation, that is transverse diameter in engagement is parietal. It is about 9.5 centimeters. As two parietal bones we are taking, it is biparietal. Okay, biparietal diameter. It is a transverse diameter of engagement. It is about 9.5 centimeters. Second point is a super sub parietal. Means, see, this is the parietal part. It is about 9.5. Super sub parietal means the parietal eminence, the top point of one side to under point of the other side. Okay, like this it will be. It is about super subparietal, the above point of one side and the below point of the other side of both the parietal points. That is super sub. It is about 8.5 centimeters. Okay. Now the third point is bitemporal. It is a distance between the two coronal points. Okay. Two coronal. These are the coronal lines. Na? See, these are the two coronal lines. This, this distance. That is about... 8 centimeters. Bitemporal means distance between two coronal points. That is the bitemporal. And the fourth one is bimastoid. It is the distance between the tips of two mastoid processes. It is about 7.5 centimeters. Okay. Now see biparietal, two parietal bones distance 9.5. And super subparietal, it is about 8.5 centimeters. Bitemporal, difference between the distance between the two coronal points is a bitemporal. And distance between the tips of the mastoid process is a bimastoid, bi that is 7.5 centimeters. The questions that can be asked from this slide are, which is the transverse diameter which is present in the engagement means biparietal diameter, it is about 9.5 centimeters. This is the shortest diameter in case of transverse diameter. That is about 7.5 by master diameters. These two questions can be asked. Okay. Uh, now we have come to the end. Uh, let's take a fetal skull and let's explain it. As I have said, let's be very brief and very simple so that you can explain. Uh, see, this is the 
vault. This is the face and this is the brow. You all know it. Okay. These are the frontal bones. These are the parietal bones. This is the occiput. You know it. And also this is the mentum. This is the segmentum part. Okay. Now, when we take the diameters of the skull, as I said, three are from the posterior side and other three are from the anterior side. Okay. This is the occiput. The prominent part is the occiput. The part which is below, just like a notch-like thing, is a sub-occipital point. Okay. Three from posterior. Sub-occipital. This is the bregma part or the anterior frontal. Sub-occipital bregmatic. 9.5. First diameter. Sub-occipital frontal. 10 centimeters. Sub-occipital. Occipital frontal. 11.5. Okay. Sub-occipital pragmatic 9.5. Sub-occipital frontal 10. Occipital frontal 11.5. Okay. Now, this is the mentum. This is the submentum. This is the vertex. Highest point on the skull. Vertex. This is the vertex. So, the mento vertical 14 centimeters so it will be like this partial extension okay this is bro presentation this is submentum submento vertical okay it's 11.5 incomplete extension that movie it will be like this face presentation and this is submento pragmatic Complete extension face presentation. Okay. Three from anterior. Three from. Three from posterior. And three from anterior. Totally six diameters. Now the transverse diameters of the skull are four. These are the parietal bones. Distance between one parietal bone to the other parietal bones. That is biparietal 9.5. And next is the point above to the point below on the parietal bones. That is super sub -parietal. it is about 8.5 distance between two coronal points okay this from here to here two coronal points it is about 8 centimeters that is by temporal and distance between the tips of the master when you measure like this from inside with the scale when you measure it is about by master it is the tip of the master it is about 7.5 centimeters you remember like this you can remember it more easily and you can answer more questions okay thank you